Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So this will be our final Jedi business episode about the Ahsoka series because the ratings are all in. Yes, we are finally far enough out from when the series completed its run that the Nielsen ratings have been released for week 8. I guess I'm presuming that it's not going to have any viewership showing up in the week following its release. So yeah, you know, we'll see about that, but there doesn't seem to be an indication that that's going to happen just based on where the numbers were. So the last time we checked in on this, we were looking at it at the halfway mark. And during week four, there had only been 459 million minutes viewed for the series, which really put it more on a par with the Andor series, doing a little bit better than Andor, but not as good as Boba Fett or Obi-Wan Kenobi or any of the seasons of The Mandalorian. We talked about how one of the weak points for the Ahsoka series was that it didn't really have any sort of splashy cameo or put another way like a water cooler moment nothing that would have created the kind of level of excitement that say in the book of Boba Fett when suddenly the Mandalorian showed up in the middle of the series and then suddenly when Luke Skywalker showed up in the middle of that series or even when Luke showed up at the end of season two of the Mandalorian like there weren't really any moments like that or at least not on a par with that so I guess you could make a case that C-3PO having a cameo in one episode kind of gave a little bit of that but there was a name drop of Leia Organa and a Leia appearance probably would have driven something much higher. There was, however, one cameo appearance that was spectacular in its way and that of course was Hayden Christensen returning to portray Anakin Skywalker in the world between worlds and in flashbacks that were happening during the Clone Wars. And that did actually have a significant effect. So from the 459 million minutes viewed during the week four release week, it went up to 577 million in week five. And it pretty much stayed at that level for the rest of the series. Actually, like almost ridiculously close. It was 577 in week five. It was 570 in week six, 572 in week seven, and 575 in week eight. So yeah, it found its level and stayed there. And just to give you an idea of the comparison, with The Book of Boba Fett, the fourth episode was at 580 million minutes viewed. And then for episode five, the week that episode five came out, that was the one where The Mandalorian showed up at it for the first time. That number jumped to 744 million minutes viewed. So it was a similar kind of situation, basically. But then it kept going upward. It was like 776 when Luke showed up at episode six and it was over 800 million for the season finale. So yeah, we didn't quite see that upward trajectory with the Ahsoka series, but by the same token, if you were to compare it to the Andor series, it definitely did much better than the Andor series, and you would have to look at it from the perspective of episodes five through eight. The finale of season one of Andor was in the 600 million, so that one did get a little more traction than the finale of the Ahsoka series, but also you have to look at it from the perspective of they're counting 12 episodes for that as opposed to eight for the Ahsoka series. So what does that actually mean? <laughs> what does it mean for how the Ahsoka series performed? Ultimately, it looks like the narrative that had been kicking around in certain circles early on in the series' run about it failing in some fashion, well, it doesn't seem like it bears up under the weight of what we're seeing in these numbers. I do still think it would have been really smart of them to at least have the Mandalorian show up in an episode. I mean, after all, these stories are supposed to tie together and go into one larger movie situation. So, you know, you had Ahsoka show up in The Mandalorian. Why not have The Mandalorian show up in Ahsoka? It seems like it would have been the reasonable thing to do under the circumstances and would also give people the opportunity to check out the Ahsoka series who might otherwise not have checked out the Ahsoka series. Certainly we saw that happen with the Book of Boba Fett. So yeah, why not do it with the Ahsoka series too? Ultimately, I was really happy to see that jump in the ratings. Certainly, that's an indicator of some strength in things, and despite the missed opportunities, it's still a good sign overall. And that's what I've got for you on our final Jedi business episode about season one of the Ahsoka series, and that is going to do it for this episode of the podcast. It just remains for me to say, thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. 
Power 7 by 7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, but their respective trademark and copyright holders may the force be with them. All original content is copyrighted by Star Wars 7 by 7 We hope you love it.